So today we're taking a look at the Annal. This is a new German tier eight battleship. And is it worth getting? Well, let's see what it looks like in this video first. It's a very different take on German battleships. We have 15 guns, right? Normally German battleships, we're not having the most firepower, right? Things like Gnais now come to mind where we have only six guns. Um, they tend to have a less than normal number of guns, but they of course get secondaries and some torpedoes, things to make up for that and brawl pretty well. But this ship doesn't have things like hydro. Its secondaries are actually worse than uh, the Tirpitz and Bismarck, for example. It does get some pretty interesting torps, 20k alpha, and they have the little wiggly effect like the uh, British battlecruisers. So that's kind of cool, but I haven't really been able to make much use of them since this is a ship that I don't really want to be within torpedo range. This is a ship where I want to play around 10, 12 kilometers away from the enemy, not six, right? So the reason for that really comes down to, yeah, no hydro. It's very difficult to deal with DDs, with subs. There's a lot of torpedoes coming at you in this game these days, and without a hydro, it's pretty difficult. The other problem really is the slow speed. So it's not a very fast ship. I'm going at most 26, 27 knots if we're using speed flag plus brisk, which is decent enough, but it's no 30 knots like a Tirpitz or Bismarck gets, right? But these guns are pretty good at close range, right? We have so many that 17K into a broadside Colorado is pretty good. The problem comes at range, and we'll go over that in a bit. But what I want to focus on here is the tankiness, okay? I want you to really notice how we're able to survive this. I'm not really at the best angle here, to be honest. And crucially, we're actually going to eat a bunch more torpedoes from that submarine. We have a Helena farming us and potentially a Colorado getting some alpha damage in on us. So this is a pretty bad position and honestly one where I would probably die if I was in a Tirpitz or a Bismarck. I really don't think I live this. And that comes down to superstructure size. So we eat the Torps, can't dodge them. We're trying to use our anti-submarine warfare as much as possible. It's very difficult to hit these days, uh, but we're trying. And the key here is a small superstructure. Unlike basically every other German battleship, we have a small superstructure, so they can light us on fire, sure, but the actual alpha damage of the guns, the HE, isn't going to be there as much as it would be on a Tirpitz or a Bismarck. So we're actually going to live here. So we managed to Citadel the Helena there at a decent angle. Uh, so that was a little bit lucky, certainly, but we did manage to take him out at closer ranges. These guns definitely can do some work. And yeah, we're going to take out the submarine. He's finally lit up there and... Uh, we live. We actually lived through this situation, and I don't think that necessarily would have happened. We don't really have much time to heal, though, at least in this game, since there's a Bismarck on the flank as well, and this is really what you want to be finding. You want to be finding broadsides of same tier or lower. I don't think this ship does well in tier 10, since these guns are 350 millimeter. They're the World War I style AP, right? So not a lot of pen the shell velocity especially is just atrocious and it can definitely struggle if people are allowed to angle as well so a little bit rough here um the bismarck we're trying to aim for his superstructure and we're gonna get an all right hit in there but uh that's gonna be one of the strengths of the Anault in comparison to the bismarck i'm sorry about flinging my mouse all over the place i was a little frustrated about the location of those uh sonar uh, pings or whatever the surface information is that submarines do when they uh, when they give off a sonar ping, right? There's that little splash. I wish it was accurate. I wish the splash was accurate. It's so difficult to deal with subs otherwise. Uh, but we do manage to take the Bismarck out. He makes a mistake, goes a little too broadside, and yeah, we do manage to take him out. And living again. Look at how low HP we have. Like, I don't think this is a position where we're living for so long and still able to do so much to help the team in another German battleship. I think the other ones have either too little HP, like the Odin, right? It has a small superstructure, good concealment as well, but it doesn't have the HP, right? We still have nearly 70,000 HP and a small superstructure for these little guns to farm. So I think that's a big strength here. So in this mid range kind of st play style, it's gonna do quite well. And especially against lower tiers, it's really, really quite good. 
I think that, yeah, the problem really comes in at higher tiers. Uh, this chappy broadside, I think I'm going to overlead this one, actually. Just a little bit too high. Uh, but the dispersion was okay, right? It's not going to be ultra accurate. Um, the Sigma's not very good. I think it's around 1.7 or something like that. Not the best accuracy, but you have so many shells. It's the volume of fire that's really making up for the accuracy. And it does a decent job. I've got quite a few near dev strikes or actually massive salvos and i'll show those towards the end but this was my best game i played in it today uh played i think five matches in it and it went pretty well all except one which we'll look at after this one but uh start with the good right and then show maybe the not so great side but a crack and unleashed here 120k carrying our weight another huge hit into the chappy confederate high caliber it's really good and it's a ship that can do extremely well. I just think the difficulty comes with, like I said, the shell velocity and as well as the speed, right? It's a ship that wants to flank because of its smaller guns and with lower speed, that can be a little tricky. Uh, so I mentioned that strength is survivability and some of the tankiness, right? Uh, this is an example where we die quickly. That's three fires instantly, start of the game. Uh, so maybe not the best luck here, but I did get too aggressive. This was my first match in it, and uh, yeah, it does not go very well. <laughs> Instantly back on fire. I'm just too aggressive here. Battleships can't do this. An Analt can't do this. Even even a Kremlin can't do this. GK or something with a Hydro, Schlieffen, you can't do this. It's just not going to work. The DPM of a Sherman especially is just too high, and we're getting flanked right against things like the Azumo and the Drake here. Uh, the torps wiggling is always kind of hilarious and interesting, but you only get one per per corner of your ship, so the alpha damage is there, but you don't have very many. We're on three fires again, a flood, eating torps, and yeah, we go down pretty quickly here. And a lot of that was from just that little bit of chip damage and damage from fires, so you gotta be careful of that. And that's why a tank build is definitely worthwhile here, because you can survive, like I showed you in the first game. You can survive situations where you shouldn't, or probably should be going down. Um, but the situations where you play too aggressive and really misplay, yeah, you're not getting out of those positions. Uh, so into a tier 10 game, finally, not beaten up on the poor tier 6s, and we're going to spam HE. I spammed HE this entire game and actually got pretty good damage out of it. I think that that's really what you're going to want to do in the Analt, especially at longer ranges where the AP loses so much pen and... Well, yeah. Kerr first. I don't know how we got that salvo. We do have turtle back. I don't think he citadeled me. Uh, but yeah, we lost half our HP to a a Kerr first at like 15 kilometers. I know it's possible, but it's just shocking. <laughs> it's just a little shocking. Uh, so I was broadside. I was, you know, I was not in the right position. I was poorly angled. I'd made every mistake possible, but still, it's a Kerr first, right? Um, but still, we're gonna get some really good damage in here. The point is, of course, the HE. It's got a 27% fire chance, which is good enough considering the volume of shells, especially if you're landing five, six shells in most salvos on battleships because they're so big. Um, yeah, fires tend to come up from that. So I don't really like that playstyle personally. I'd prefer to use AP a lot more, but considering the shell velocity, just look at how floaty these things are. The angle of attack and the low velocity really doesn't lend itself to good AP pen at these ranges. And it means that the HE is just kind of the way to go. It's kind of sucks for me because I don't really enjoy that, but the damage output is just okay. It really comes from fires. So you're really trying to relight the same battleship that damage control the fire. And I do a decent job of that here. Um, but keep in mind, you got to lead your targets, okay? This Richelieu, right? We should be able to hit them reasonably well. We're leading, you know, almost to the edge of our screen here, right? And nope, nope, it's uh, it's gonna land a little behind him, actually. <laughs> so even after a few games, it took me a little bit to get used to this, right? So even though we do manage to luckily hit a few shells and get a fire, right? That's the nice thing about HE as well. You can kind of miss and still deal damage. Um, but yeah, you gotta lead really far. We're gonna lead much farther this time. Um, out to what 12 on the uh, on the uh, smart horizon crosshair and it's still not going to be quite enough because he actually is turning away from us so it's not really a ship you want to play at long range there's so much time to dodge if people are paying attention to you they're just going to dodge your salvo it's really really not hard to do against this ship and once you angle to the ap 
well, you're gonna bounce or shatter a lot of the time. So it's really in matches like this where you're able to play at close range. I think the AP is gonna do really, really well. Again, I'm not running a secondary build here simply because we don't have the number of secondaries that a Tirpitz or a Bismarck does. You have the secondaries accuracy like a normal Tirpitz or Bismarck. So slightly improved over stock secondaries, but you're not a Schlieffen or Massachusetts, Ohio level of accuracy on the secondaries. So they're okay, you could spec into them. Uh, but personally, I didn't because they just aren't that many, right? So we're lacking a lot of DPM. I'd much rather focus on these main guns, trying to get them as accurate as possible. So when people go broadside, we can do at least one Citadel. <laughs> we only had like two shells there, it's crazy. Um, just to really drive the point home, I know I've talked about it so much already, but you really need to understand how slow these shells are. This is a reversing North Carolina. We're checking his speed with our torps, always a really handy thing to do on a battleship with torpedoes. Check which direction he's going in. He's reversing, so we're gonna lead for him to reverse. And yeah, we just got speed juked by a North Carolina. <laughs> At 17 kilometers, it's slow shells. They're very slow shells, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you're someone who struggles with leading targets, this is not gonna be a battleship for you. I really don't think that it's gonna do particularly well because in higher tier games, you can't play as aggressive as I'm playing in a lot of these games. Notice that we're playing against tier sixes a lot. I got quite lucky with the matchmaker here. I don't know why that was, but in the tier 10 games, we're always going to play outside of 15, 16, 17 kilometers. And that requires 12 second lead times a lot of the time, which is just kind of crazy. So it's tough to play in those higher tier games. And that's why I don't think this ship is really one I'm gonna recommend. As we're getting towards the end of this video, I haven't really given my opinion on whether you should get it or not yet. I don't really recommend it, um, mainly because of its inability to really work at longer ranges. And it's not because it's got no shells, it doesn't have accuracy. It, it makes up for accuracy with just volume of fire, right? It just comes down to it's hard to lead at long distances, and you just need that long range firepower. It's a ship that can't really push into subs and DDs because you don't have a hydro. It's a ship that does well at close range against battleships and cruisers because it has a small superstructure relative to a lot of the other superstructures at the tier. Hard to take out. We'll go over the armor in port here in a little bit, but it's pretty tanky, right? It's really the strength here that it has a small superstructure, good armor, and a lot of guns that do a ton of damage at close range. I think this is probably the best example here where we're gonna shoot at this York second. We're actually gonna go for the Brindisi first. But notice, right, he's like at what, 17, 18 kilometers. And yeah, we got 11 seconds of lead time here into the Brindisi. So he has 11 seconds to do anything and he will dodge this salvo guaranteed. He's been a little distracted though. So yeah, we're gonna get a good hit, um, which is nice. So it shows against cruisers, you can, you can do something at range but it's so much easier at close range, right? As soon as we start shooting at this York here, it's getting into the 13 kilometer range, which is not very common at tier 10 even. Um, it's really these mid and low tier games, right? Suddenly we have much, much less lead that we have to take and it's way easier to hit a York. So taking him out and we did pretty good in this game as well. I think we got up to what, 127? So it did well, it did really well, it was averaging I think over 100k already really really quite good i just don't think that in those tier 10 games it's gonna play nearly this well so personally i really wouldn't be spending on this ship i would be going and waiting for black friday and seeing if you can maybe sneak a massachusetts b maybe that shows up or a georgia b or something like that um, and even if they don't show up there's some pretty good sales on black friday um, that's probably what i would wait for at this point it's gonna be 12,800 doubloons. It'll also show up in the premium shop. Uh, today it should be actually on the 16th. Um, that's when the ship is being released. You get this cam, you can get this camo, which is uh, interesting to say the least. <laughs> the, the sails or solar panels don't show up in game. It's just this base part when you're actually in a battle. But personally, I actually really like the default. Um, it's pretty clean, right? Like that's, that's pretty good looking. Um, and of course, right? This, this armor. It's just really, really tough to deal damage to as a light cruiser or a destroyer, right? 32 mil plating here, just a tiny superstructure relative to the size of the ship. So 
if you're not getting too aggressive and a little bit unlucky, I would say, with the number of fires we had in that one clip where I died instantly. Um, I was too aggressive, though. But still, that was a crazy amount of fires when DDs are shooting you here and here. If you're not getting that kind of RNG, you're going to survive a long time, like in that Kraken game. And there were several other matches um, that I didn't really show you everything. I think that Kraken game was the best example of tanking, but I lived through so many situations where I thought I was going to go down. And if I had been in a Tirpitz, I think I probably would have gone down. The commander I was using looked a little bit like this. Um, I was trying Brisk in my last game with it. I think that's a reasonable thing to do since your concealment is pretty good. 12.2, right? So it's something that you can work with. Your reload is, of course, 30 seconds. So there's that 10 second period where you're making use of it most of the time, assuming you're shooting all the time. Um, but most of the games I actually had basic survivability instead of Brisk and uh, Emergency Repair Specialist. It's up to you. Uh, but I do think Grease the Gears is required. I think Gun Feeder is required. I think Adrenaline Rush is required. I think Concealment, Fire Prevention, and probably Emergency Repair Expert too. Pretty required on this ship. If you wanted to spec secondaries, I'd probably give up the extra heal personally, since uh, Fire Prevention is just so good on this ship. Is something you could do. I'm not terribly interested in it as a secondary ship, because like I said, the DPM is so low on the secondaries relative to its peers at tier 8. Uh, so even though it tanks a little better, you're getting most of your damage on your main guns anyway. As far as the upgrades, this is what I was using here. Maybe if you're uh, dropping the basic survivability like I did here, uh, maybe, maybe you spec damage control system mod too, so you retain that extra level of tankiness. Uh, but I enjoyed using the propulsion mod because it's a slower ship, we want to get going faster, right? are uh what 26.3 knots as fast as we can go and i think that was with the speed flag so 25 knots base it's not the fastest ship in the world so that's the adult i think it's a decent ship it actually got better the more i played with it but those long range engagements were painful uh it's very 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 hard to lead long range shots and i think because of that i would really wouldn't recommend it i think you're better off going for a different tier 8 premium ship and especially waiting for black friday that tends to be the best time to buy stuff in this game there's premium ships on sale there's black friday versions of ships that have been removed from the game uh, it's a good time so we're getting close enough that i think i can say you should probably wait for that uh, but if it interests you i think i gave you a pretty good look at what this ship is there's definite strengths here it hits very hard when it hits and at mid to close range it's awesome uh, just too much long range engagements these days for me to really recommend it for most of you so let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you very much for watching and i hope you have a great rest of your day